Thanks a lot for tuning in. Today's video is going to be about workflow and how you can do things to speed up your process. Uh, for me, this is really important and I spend a lot of time always trying to find things that will help save me time. Uh, and also the last thing you want when you're starting a track is anything to hinder your workflow or, you know, make you lose your creative flow. So today I'm going to show you some tips on things that um, you may already know or things you might have already set up. But these are the things that I have set up and I spoke to clients before and they haven't thought to do this. So I thought I'd share these with you. So firstly, the most important thing I would suggest doing is setting yourself up a template. The template that I have set up um, started from a track that I had finished and I felt it was um, to a high professional level sounding track. So what I did was I stripped it back down, took all the the, the the MIDI, the elements, the melody and stuff like that and just really stripped it right back down. And basically what it gave me was the elements down the left hand side as to what goes in a professional sounding trance track and reminds me of the things that I need to add to the track when I'm producing my next one. So what you'll see down the side here is a lot of stuff, um, which elements that I've got in. Uh, I deleted some. Uh, which were only specific to that uh, specific uh, track. But these are a the lot of the stuff that I use in most of my tracks. I mean, keep adding to this, taking away from the template, whatever, as you go along. I've been building on this now for a few years, so I've got different buses in there um, and stuff like that. So another thing that this helps you for as well is to remind you, a lot of the time I get stuck in the loop. I tend to work from a loop at first, build on the loop, um, and then what I find is I get myself a bit stuck on a bass line or something like that. And to speed things up, what I tend to do is I look down the left-hand side of the list of the things that I need to do, and I'll move on to that and then come back to the bass later. Sometimes I'll find myself plotting stuff around the track, like working on kick and bass here, and then I'll go over here, do a bit of melody, and it might look a bit all uh, messy and stuff like that, but then just moving on to the next element when you're stuck, is great because then you can just come back later on and just piece it all together. Um, so that's why I have a lot of the stuff down here. So get yourself a template set up uh, with all the different elements in. I'm sure that'll help you. What you'll also notice I've got still left in this template is certain um, MIDI files. Uh, MIDI files for stuff that I use all the time in a track. So for example, your 4-4 four, four kick. Instead of drawing this in every time, I have it already in there. Um, what else have I got in here? I have bass lines, different sort of bass lines and stuff, um, different bass stabs, positions, so you can see here different positions I've do, done. I don't always use them all, but it's easier to delete a channel uh, than it is to make one, create the MIDI, etc, etc. So what you'll find here, I've got, for example, I often use either an offbeat sub or this double pattern offbeat sub. And then I just go in and just delete whichever one it is that I don't want for that track. Um, so I've got different acid sounds here and stuff like that, different text tabs. Uh, and I've got a few temporary placeholder uh, crashes and stuff like that for when I'm working on my bass line. I tend to put some crashes in to see how it's going to sound for impacts reasons and stuff like that. So that's a lot of stuff I've got. You'll also notice as well on um, this the reason why I've got the MIDI in here is so that I can come and change in the sampler the sound. I don't have to keep messing around with it. I just come along and move my MIDI. Okay, so the next thing I do, uh, and I would suggest a lot of people doing, is if you have a sampler in your door, or if you have Logic, for example, um, they have a plugin called EXS24. Uh, this is Logic Sampler, and I spent a lot of time, and I'm still building on it now, um, building organized folders for the AXS24. So what I mean by this is you'll notice I've got my MIDI here for my kick drum. But what I also have here is if I go to edit, you'll notice that I've got maybe 25 different kicks or so there. And what I've done there is I've gone through the Dave Parkinson pack, or if you go through any sort of pack, and I've gone through the, all the 500 kicks that are in there and I've picked the kicks that I know I would use in the future for my tracks. And I've loaded them into the sampler and it makes it much easier when I want to come and find a kick specific for that style or my style track. 
the last thing you want to do when you're trying to get ideas for a track down is sit there sieving through tr kicks or claps or whatever trying to find a nice sound that um you know will work in your track if you've already done this process over a two-day thing and organized it it's going to save you so much time in the future and it's also not going to make you lose your creative flow so that's one thing i've done for that uh, for my kicks and also as well if you've done it for like claps and stuff like that you can then audition your kicks with your claps move them down up and down the thingy for example i can have my kick playing and i can just audition a clap with my kick and see which one sounds best And just go through them and it really speeds up your workflow and I've done that for my claps kicks hi-hats anything really uh, what I'll also do sometimes is I will throw in the whole pack into the sampler and it just means I can quickly jump across my keyboard and instantly hear a sound um, rather than go into your audio bank and press and play and it takes a few seconds for it to play it's just little things like this to help speed up the flow um, so that's what I've done with my samples. Um, also, when it comes to organizing samples and stuff, um, I have a folder, I'll just get it for you now. Uh, organized MIDI and organized audio. So little drone patterns that I might use for certain chord progressions, uh, ARP sounds that I've used, and I've put them all in my own special folder, acid patterns. and. Um, and how I did this was I went through old packs, uh, not old packs, sorry, old tracks of mine. Um, and there was certain patterns and stuff that I'd forgot that I used that I really liked. Uh, so I just went through different tracks, took out different um, midis, audio samples and stuff like that, and just put them into your own sort of um, sound bank, if you wish. I mean, you could probably end up selling it later on if you've got enough stuff in there. But it just for my own personal... Uh, productions I like to be able to go to something quickly change it around obviously I don't want always to have the same stuff in every track but again just something to speed the process up um, another thing that I use to speed up the process um, again go into sample packs preset packs and stuff like that is when I receive a new uh, preset bank or I buy a new preset bank what I will do is I will go through the pack uh, and listen to the different sounds. If there's anything in there that I like, I will then save it as a channel strip. That way then, if I want to then find a nice saw lead whilst I'm making a track, I, I've remembered that I've um, saved some before and I don't have to sit there looking through, trying to find them, lose my work process. My phone goes off next minute, I'm on the internet doing whatever. <laughs> so just little things that I had to try and keep things moving along. Um, other things that I have uh, to save flow um also on my um template is i have for example certain plugins and stuff that i use a lot of the time for that certain element so if it's a kick you know i might have a low cut on stuff like that uh, i have it sent through to a parallel compression bus uh reverb bus uh buses set up uh, and i have them turned on and off so obviously i'm not doing the same processing all the time but Little things that like trigger to remind me that, you know, this needs low cutting, this needs that, this needs that, and stuff like that. Um, okay, so that's more for your organized sort of stuff. Um, next off, I want to come into just sort of a few production tip flow workflows to help things. So you'll notice here I've got a few different reference track channels. Uh, the reason for this is when I start to produce a track, I have a clear idea in my head of where it's going to go. The style it's going to be in, the label that I'm aiming for, etc, etc. So what I will do is I will, one second, just going to throw a track in there. So for example, if I wanted to make something pretty techy, like this Joint Operation Center track, for example, um, I will throw that in. I will throw a few other sort of reference tracks in there. Uh, and the reason for this is if you throw it into the door, you can quickly skip between your track and the reference track. 
just at the click of a button so I can play my track, ignore the sounds that are, you're about to hear. They're just beeps and just general sounds that are already in there that need changing. So. And I can quickly flick between the two very fast. Uh, I know a few people that have said to me before that they have it in iTunes, for example, but I tend to find that by the time I've paused the track in my door, gone over to iTunes and played it in iTunes, I've forgotten exactly how it sounds. Um, the other cool thing about having it in the door is you can chop the track up. So obviously, if you want, you want certain elements referencing at a certain time, so you might want a melody drop you might want to cut it up and line it up with your melody drop to make sure, you know, things are sounding right. Um, so once I have, a, I actually have a few reference tracks in there, one for referencing my mix down, and then the other ones in there are just for sort of ideas when I get stuck. Um, I might find myself just stuck in the loop. I don't know what to do next. I don't know what sort of sounds to add. So I'll just go through and listen to a few tracks for a few minutes. I might find a stab sound or a percussion hit that I like, and then I'll just, it'll give me ideas to add into my track. So that's that for reference tracks. Um, whilst we're on reference tracks, actually, what I want to do as well is show you my output bus and the stuff that I have on there. Um, firstly, you'll notice I've got a, a multi-presser, which is a multi-band compressor, but I don't use it to do anything it's literally just to solo certain frequency bands so for example if i want to listen to the low end in my reference track and the reason why i'd want to do this is there's a lot of stuff going on in trance uh, and sometimes it's hard to home in on certain elements with your ear if you're not used to doing it so a little tip for you is to put something like this on your output uh, i use the logic multipressor so i can solo certain bands and i can change the band depending on how i want so if I wanted to listen to the low end in this track, sorry, that's my track. If I wanted to listen to it in the reference track, I can listen to the low end in that track and then quickly skip to my track. Ignore the fact this isn't a mixed track. These are just elements, but, and I can quickly switch between them. Another reason why I use this is sometimes tracks can sound dull. The, that's due to the fact that there's not enough high end or sometimes they can sound a bit too thin and brittle, and that's due to the fact that there's um, not enough low end. So it's nice to have a good balance. So another thing that I'll check with reference tracks as well is the high and low together and see how they are uh, gelling with each other. And you can obviously then just add and take out any any of the uh, the frequency bands out and see how yours are compared to the reference track. Another thing that I have on the output bus is the multimeter. Um, I understand that these tracks are obviously mastered and a lot of the time at mastering stages, uh, depending if it's needed, is there'll be stereo wideners and stuff like that on the, the master to help the stereo width. So you have to be a bit careful when referencing an already mastered track when it comes to what I'm about to talk about. But what you can use is say a good mix down of your own. If you, or you have a mix down of another track, for example, that you can use uh, to check the stereo width of bands. So if I have the stereo width, um, I might wanna check the stereo width of this area, for example, so I can click solo on there and I can see how the stereo width is within that certain band. Obviously, if you go to mono, it should be much more mono. So you can see there, it's much more mono. Um, so that's another tip I use just to see in certain bands how you generally find the higher up the higher up the frequency, the the, more, the wider it is. So that's another little tip for you to look at. Um, I have Span, which is a free plugin to visually check on things uh, that I have. So in my studio, for example, or you, in your studio, you may have um, bass buildup, in which case you're hearing the bass sound much louder. Um, so it's good to have a visual representation of how your bass is sound in visual representation to see how your bass is volume wise to the highs and stuff like that. So 
that's a free plugin. Uh, I'll go more into that later on in the other production videos as to when and why I use that. Uh, and then I've got a gain again. I'll show that later on as to why I do that. And then the final one that I have here is something that I got recently uh, and it's really helped uh, my studio. It's a calibration system which takes 28, I think, mic, mic points from your monitors. Uh, they have a monitor calibration and a headphone calibration system from it's called Sonarworks Reference 3 and what you can see here is from my Newman 5 inch monitors I was getting a massive boost in my mid range therefore I was when I was taking my tracks into another room or car stereo I was losing a lot of the mid which I thought was actually there in the studio but it wasn't excuse me so this will flatten the the reference out you put it on the master at the end uh, before you bounce it out you turn it off and it sh it's made a, a world of difference to my low end and stuff like that so uh, that's something you can check out as well okay so I hope some of these tips have helped you uh, there's gonna be a lot more videos coming so keep your eye out for them um, Thanks a lot for tuning in. If there's any of you that want to have a more in-depth one-to-one tuition, you can check out my page, AM Studios. Uh, I have a lot of clients at the moment who I'm working with who are finding it a massive help to have one-on-one -on -one studio uh, time uh, asking questions for their specific style, etc., etc. Uh, and yeah, thanks a lot for tuning in. I will see you again soon.